first thing the following morning, I get a call before my bank, MidFirst, opened. And it was the branch manager, and she said, Good morning, DJ. Uh, you know the check that we deposited to pay off your HELOC? I said, Yeah. She said, It was returned by Bank of America. I said, What? She said, Yeah, don't worry though, because we did pay off the HELOC with the funds you had on deposit. So your HELOC is paid off. I said, Yeah, but now I'm out how many thousands of dollars out of my personal account. She said, um, I asked her, I said, can you send me a copy of that check? I want to see any notations, annotations on that check. She said, I will. So with that, I got home, got on the phone with Bank of America, uh, yeah, Bank of America, with their main credit card or credit customer service division, and got a lady named Mary on the phone who seemed to know exactly what the problem was and that she could fix it. Well, here's how that conversation went. Hi, how are you, Ben? I'm good. What are you doing? Good. Uh, working. <laughs> uh, just kidding. <laughs> I don't have to do that on a Friday. Uh, oh, no. You should be home. I know. Uh, listen, I was calling because Bank of America returned that check you gave us. What? Now, luckily, you have enough money with us to where your loan payment isn't impacted. But yeah, they returned the check, and we will not run it a second time because of the way they returned it. How? Did, why did they return it? What's the it way they returned the it? Item, the item is being returned for refer to maker, meaning you have to refer straight to the bank that they're not for some reason allowing it to be reran. Because normally, like, say I gave you a check and you deposited it and it returned because, I don't know, I didn't have enough money. We would run it a second time for you to try and collect from me. The only times we can't do that is if it's returned for a stop payment because we know it'll never go through because it's got a stop payment on it. Right. And fraud, say, for example, and then refer to maker. So, so I don't know. What do I do now? The loan department or a branch, which they don't really answer, so I don't know how you so I went to the Bank of America over there by the Albertsons in um, by uh, what is that Tremonto, and she, I, I tell you, her and I were on the phone with Bank of America for an hour and fifteen minutes. First of all, yeah. First of all, they couldn't verify who I was. I'm like, are you kidding me? I've been with you guys for 28 years, and now all of a sudden I want to take it, take advantage of this zero interest offer that you get now you can't uh, verify who I am and we're sitting in front of a physical employee right and the physical employee was telling the girl over the phone well um, she's sitting right in front of me I have two forms of ID she says yeah but that kind of doesn't matter we have to be able to verify her through the system what does that mean this looks and sounds a lot to me like we're being converted to nodes on a network. And when you have multiple nodes, in this case hundreds of thousands of nodes on a network, whether it's a computer network, a banking network, whatever, uh, once a node is disconnected from that network, it can no longer interact with it. Now here's the thing. You'll no longer be able to interact with the network if your, take, if your node is taken down See, we're no longer flesh and blood people to these large institutions, to the government, to, you know, everything and anything that we need to survive in today's society, in this environment. We are cash chattel. We're cash assets to them. And when they pull the plug, Okay. We will have no recourse. It will happen all at once, no warning, and you know, you'll go to bed Friday afternoon, wake up Monday morning, there'll be a banner across your uh, TV station, and it will read something like, banks are closed, you know, due to blah blah blah, cyber attack. Uh, you know, maybe something else ridiculous like 
CrowdStrike and the problem we had there. And don't forget the internet outages that happened prior to that globally. So all be in the same boat at the same time. Who knows how much, if anything, they will let you have access to once they reopen again in a day, a week, whatever. Um, yeah, so what should I do? Go back down to Bank of America? So was this an offer from your credit card with them maybe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So, gosh, for multiple reasons. One, no, I don't know if I'm right on this one because it says check, right on the check, it says check must post your account by September 7, 2024. Mm -hmm. So it should still be a valid check. Uh -huh. The only thing to think is if they had messed up the account number that's on the check itself. So like when you get these credit card offers, the account number on the bottom is never your credit card number. It's like a generated account number related to your credit card. Okay. You know, so, uh, but because they returned it, they will have on record as to why. Unfortunately, it sounds like that also means you're gonna have to call the credit card part of Bank of America. Okay. Well, this is just fantastic, I have to tell you. You know, even even the lady at Bank of America was telling me, she said they are making it more and more difficult for people to access um, access offers, access funds, transfer funds from one institution to another, or even within the same institution. They're making it more and more difficult, you know, for people to, to even withdraw money from the bank, their own money. Yeah. And she said yeah. that that's well, on purpose. I was I surprised. So. My teller, yeah, my teller Leslie, she used to work at Bank of America like a gazillion years ago. So most of her money and accounts are here, but she had an account at Bank of America and she paid a bill out of it. And then she had, they transferred money from one of her other accounts. They did, but then they still returned her bill, even though they had transferred the money to pay the bill. What? It's like nobody had an answer as to why. Oh my god. I don't know. They're starting to close locations. I know that's a big bank. It's not like they're gonna run out of business by any means. No, but that but begs the question too. Why the are they closing to do business? The way they're choosing to do business and why are they closing locations? That says to me they're going going more and more towards automated banking where they don't Correct. need physical people. Yes. And physical Them brick and, and mortar. Chase. Yeah, them and Chase are both in the same. Chase has been doing it for longer, honestly. Chase, you walk in and they're like, call customer service. Yeah. Like, no, I'm here. I want to talk to you. I know. Don't be at your desk. You know, kind of thing. But um, I know this one at Daisy Mountain is closing, mm -hmm. which honestly has been beneficial to us because, you know, people. Mm -hmm. Do you, you have know, the physical I'm check? Or do you no, have I something? Get a copy of it. You get a copy of it. Okay, do you have something that says that the check was returned? Mm, not yet. Well, we do, but you will get a letter in the mail. But like I said, they'll have a record of it because they're the ones that returned it. Okay, well, now i got to go in and cancel my auto bill pay to Bank of America because I was transferring, you know, the monthly payment I was making to Midfirst only because of interest rates. I think my loan is up to something like 12 something, 13%, and I opened that, yeah, that with six. Uh, Chris Prime over the last two years has just skyrocketed. Oh, yeah, this is what the government's doing. Do you want me to text you a picture of the check? Yes, that would be perfect. Okay, I'm going to send it to you right now, okay? Okay, thank you, honey. Well, Thanks for calling Bank of America. This is Mary in Jacksonville, Florida. To whom do I have the pleasure of speaking with today? Hi, Mary. This is Deborah Welsh. And thank I you, Walsh. Go ahead. I don't have your account information yet. Um, do you want to provide it first, or you can, uh, you know, is it a general question that you're calling well, about? The last four digits of my account are, I don't have the card. I think I misfiled it at some point in time. It wasn't stolen, but I just, I think I misplaced it. And misplaced it. 
I won't have uh, access to it using the last four. Um, if you don't have it, I could get you a full social. Okay, let me pull that up one second. I just call my monitor and record it. And if I send you a text message, are you able to receive one? I'm sorry, what? If I send you a text message, are you able to receive one? Yeah, but they had trouble trying to do that back on the 5th. Uh, it wouldn't go through on your end. So consequently, I couldn't get it. So um, I'm sorry, what did you, did you say your name is Mary? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Very good. Okay. So just to confirm before I move on to the next uh, page in here, no text, right? Um, no, I have text, but your system was not able to send it to me to my phone number for some reason. They kept telling me it's not going through, it's not going through. I'm like, well, I don't, get, I don't understand that. I get text messages all day long. So, you can try. Well, uh, when you, when, yes, please, because I don't know what system is that or you talk to. Um, I can tell you if it's not here. That's all my option. Okay. What's the number? Thank you. And I have a gmail.com in here. Can I send a code there? Uh, yeah, I'm not in front of a computer, but I should be able to get it on my phone. Thank you, ma'am. I sent one, and this should give me information on your account, okay? And we'll see what's going on, why you said you cannot get any verification. Well, good luck with that. I haven't been able to get verification from you guys since the pit. And they sent me down to a branch, you know what, where I live, and uh, because they said you need to be physically verified by someone because our system can't verify you. I said, I don't understand what the problem is. I've been with you guys for 28 years, and I've never had this problem before. And, and I went to the branch, and we were on the phone with Lou Lee somewhere, I guess, at the main uh, credit center. And both ladies, very, very nice, very, very nice. And the end result of that was Lou Lee was telling Erica at Bank of America branch you know, well, we, the problem is why she can't take advantage of this offer we sent her is because our system can't verify her. And Erica, uh, uh, Erica at Bank of America said, that's why she's here. You told her to come down to a branch with her ID. I'm verifying her. I'm sitting right here. She's sitting across the desk from me. I have two forms of ID. She is a customer of Bank of America, and I don't understand why you, you can't verify her. So that's oh, kind of I see. Really I kind of know what's I kind of know what's uh, going on there. So they may you want to share that with me? Yeah. So because I mean, uh, it's not uh, just you. So every um, before we're doing some it looks like you're tra taking advantage of promotions, right? I'm trying so to. So before. Yeah, so before we can just uh, go ahead and get you verified in a different system and complete a balance transfer or direct deposit. But recently, okay, this is so recent because I've been doing this for seven years. Recently, they made some changes to have a higher level of verification. But um, to where, so like, high, nobody gets we verified. Have <laughs> no, that's why I, I will check uh, into your account once I get the code. Um, if you don't mind checking your email mm. and see uh, what uh, what I can do in there. Okay, okay, Mary, hang on one second. Sorry about that, ma'am. Yeah. Did you catch that? Recently, they've been changing their security systems so that it can pro provide a higher level of verification. Evidently, it's so good that it can't even verify its established customers and they make you run in circles and jump through hoops to access not only your funds but funds that you want to take advantage of that you you know it's just it's crazy and the thing that caught my attention was, was that she said recently we've installed this system so Hmm.
I don't have an email yet. You have the okay. right email? Well, wait, just, Go ahead. It says gmail.com. That's all I had. Okay. So we don't know if the first part of that is correct. All right, honey, hang on one second. Let me go into my... Okay. Oh, Bank of America alert authorization. Okay. Um, oh, my code is 259107. Okay, give me one moment. All right, Ms. Wells, I'm on the count. This is me. Uh, are you there? Mm hmm. Okay. So, like I mentioned earlier, they have like a higher verification, right? So I'm assuming when I click later on on the balance transfer window, verification will come up again. But before I do that, okay, because once I click on it, I cannot go back. Okay, uh, before I do that, let me check on your contact history and preference first, okay? Because mm -hmm. this is uh, what I've seen, uh, like the issue for other clients. We have to make sure we update uh, the priorities and contact preference. Give me one second, and ma'am, thank you for your business with us. We appreciate that. Okay. So the number that I, ha I have it listed in here. Okay. This is why the other associate, and even including myself earlier, cannot see it. It says, we're sorry, we're unable to complete this request. This is just me updating it. Okay. Okay. Um, but I've had that cell phone number. This is pending. I've had, the, I've had that cell phone number for 20 years. Yes, but there was a, I'm, tr I'm going to try to find out in here because there's like a, under like that preference, it says OLB services alerts. It is locked for including an employee. Mm -hmm. uh, give me one second. I know um, it is the fraud department that handles this, but I'm going to place myself on hold. Give me one moment. Okay. okay? Thank you. All right, Ms. Wells, I, I found a solution, but it's not going to be me that can handle it. So with that alert, uh, not anyone can do it. Uh, it is like uh, it says transfer to specialty servicing so they can remove that. Um, this number is associated with the service. Uh, it says they previously set up. It's something you have uh, set up online when you actually um, start using Zelle. Does that make sense? No. This is for security preference. Okay. So let me uh, contact the specialty servicing, okay? Mm -hmm. And then uh, they can update it for you once it's updated. Well, they did that. Us some time. Uh, Marie, Mary, they did that when I went to Bank of America branch on, what was it, Monday? Uh -huh. Wait, let me see the date on this check. It was the 6th. So that was, today is the 9th. Today is what the ninth, so that was Tuesday, right? It was Monday or Tuesday. I went to Bank of America branch, and they said um, we've updated your phone number. We've updated a couple things that were old. Oh, my address. They were still showing an Albuquerque address in there. She said we updated all that, so the system should be updated for security reasons by now. Um. Okay, here's the thing. I haven't lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico in over 10 years. I have been getting all of my Bank of America statements to my new address here in Arizona for the past 10 years. But for somehow, for some reason, they're still show, showing all my old information that they use for verification. And... As I mentioned, Bank of America at the branch already updated all of my qualifying identification documents, my address, my phone number, my driver's license, my date of birth. They, they updated everything there. So apparently it can take up to 10 years for their system to catch up with client profile updates. So anybody can update on information. I can do it too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let me just check who's that associate that did it. Because the, the one, uh, the way that it's looking in here, there's like a bell alert. Normally that's something we cannot touch. 
Okay, so you said you remember that associate name because I don't think uh, yes, that was associate very nice. is from. There were two of them. Casualty. Actually, one was Erica. Oh. She was at uh, she was at my local Bank of America branch, and the other one was Lee, Lou Lee, and she was at some main office somewhere, and so it was kind of like a three way conference call we were having in the branch branch manager's office. Um, they updated everything from there, and that was on the 6th, August 6th. The 6th. Okay, let me check on that one second. And this is the only number that you have, right? You don't have a home phone or anything that... No, okay. I don't think I've had a home phone for 20 years, 15 wow. years. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's just extra bill. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking at the history of what was hap oh, what happened on the 6th. Mm -hmm. Everything is just documentation, mm -hmm. uh, authorization code. I don't see anything that they uh, did in regards to this phone number, to be honest with you. I don't well, see it. My phone number hasn't changed in 20 years. No, no, it's, just, uh, it's not the phone number to change it. It's just the setup. That's in here since they oh. made uh, changes on the balance transfer that we have to do higher verification. Oh, okay. So let me, if you allow me, I'll stay with you uh, on the line. Let me contact the specialty servicing department. All right, I'll hold. Thank you. They're, the, they're the only one that can uh, actually handle this. And then when they pick up the call, I'll add you on the line. Okay, this okay. Is for this, uh, just for the uh, security reason, and then once they update it, they can tell you whether either wait 24 hours or you're good to go and do a balance transfer. They can connect you back to us. Okay, okay? I, all right. Um, Mary? Is it Mary yes, or Mia? Yes, yes, Mary. Mary, okay. I can't wait 24 hours because let me explain the reason <laughs> why I'm calling you, okay? Between That's okay. Between hours yes. and hours, on the phone on on the phone with Bank of America on the fifth, then in person with Bank of America, then in person with Mid First Bank, which is where I do my daily banking. They gave me instructions what I had to do because they could I I was using this to pay off a HELOC, right? I see. Okay. Okay. So Lilu was telling Erica, she mentioned, she goes, uh, I asked, I said, well, can you do an electronic funds transfer because this loan is accruing $12.54 or whatever it was per day. So I need to know what the exact payout amount is going to be. And she said, no, because we can't verify you the normal way, you have to use one of the checks. I said, so if I... I, she, she gave me instructions. She said, make the check out. She said to yourself, deposit it in your, in your personal checking account. Then when you get to your bank, she said, make sure you tell them that this is an access check and it's as good as cash. She said, make sure you put the loan number you're paying off on the check. And she said, what, when the check clears, then, you know, oh, how did she explain? She, yeah, she said then transfer it from that checking account to the HELOC and pay it off. And she said then our check, Bank of America's check on the offer, will be deposited in your bank account, your, your daily banking account, within, within 24 to 48 hours. I said, okay, so I went and did that. Well, guess what? Your check bounced. You refused payment on it. So now I'm stuck with a negative balance in my account. I can't go to the grocery store. I can't get gas. I can't pay my bills. You know, but my bank, Bank of, uh, bank, uh, Mid First Bank, called me early this morning before they even opened and said, DJ, I go by DJ, not Pippa. She said, DJ, the check that we did to pay off your HELOC, she said, it wasn't funded. I said, what do you mean it wasn't funded? She said,
In conclusion, we know that the banks are moving towards digitization, okay? Digitalization of cash, money. It's looking like there's not going to be any more personal banking available. Any banking that you want to have to do is going to have to be done online, on a computer, and if you're lucky, you can get somebody in a customer service division on the phone somewhere in BFE that may be able to help you. What I found in all of this information is that it appears to me that the banks have compartmentalized so much that the one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing anymore. And, you know, they're not cross compatible, these departments. That is not good for the banking consumer. We also know that in conjunction with DARPA, the military, uh, and some of the biggest tech giants in the world all collaborated on the Jade 2 software program, which is a total command and control program. Uh, it was originally used for battle planning, but as you can see in the three modules that I discussed in depth in previous videos regarding Jade Helm, the Prodigy, Format, and Parka modules, they don't necessarily have to be programmed for battle. Okay, they can be programmed to disrupt economic and financial institutions on a global basis. Now, we saw the security issues that a lot of these big banks had with the CrowdStrike debacle. Okay, I believe that was a smokescreen. That was either a smokescreen to misdirect or it was a test run of what the software can do in the financial systems. Confirmed by two sources that work at these banks that their intent is, meaning the banks, is to make access to your funds, mobility of your funds, more and more difficult. Why? because if you can move your funds around, you can get them out of those institutions. And if you can get them out of those institutions, who benefits in the event of a national banking holiday or a total financial collapse? I, I believe it was Libya or Lebanon. Libya or Lebanon, and I think it was Spain and Italy, where they pulled this those were test runs. I, you know, I, I'm sorry. I can't look at that any other way. Those were small, isolated test runs to see how a banking holiday would work. In other words, if they can get away with it. You know, banks closed, you got X amount in, in there on deposit, banks reopen, now you don't have that amount anymore. They were typically known as bail-ins. Um, we're putting out another video shortly that will sum up everything I've shown you about what I think is going on. And I certainly do not hope that this happens, but all the dots right now, when you connect them, they're painting a very clear picture. We have internet bottlenecks, um, we have streaming bottlenecks, we're having communication bottlenecks that are affecting communications, cell phones, streaming devices, all of it. And when and if this all does go down, there will be no warning. I think maybe one of the possible precursors to this would be that all international transfers outside the country from a financial institution will be stopped. They won't allow you to make them.
financial transfers coming in, no problem. Because they, when they let a, let a match to this, they want to have as much money in there as possible before they blow it all up. Okay, so that's about the best advice I, I can give right now. Again, you know, this is what I see happening after connecting dots over many months and being very involved with the nefarious workings of not only the, our government, but other governments around the world, and let's call them the proponents of the new world agenda, the new world order. This has been their plan for a very long time, and although they are very patient people, I think their time is running out, and they're going to have to do something, and it's going to be drastic.